From the very beginnings of the Morse telegraph, the Morse key has undergone development, changing from one form to another to meet the requirements of the day and use the technology available. The very first Morse key was developed for the original trial telegraph system, installed in 1844 by Samuel Morse. Called the correspondent, this key was probably invented by Alfred Vail, one of Morse's associates. It was very simple in its construction and met the immediate needs of the time, although it left much to be desired in terms of its operation. After the demonstration of this first telegraph system, more lines were introduced and a more effective key was needed. As a result, the lever correspondent was developed. As the name indicates, it used a lever mechanism with a fulcrum and this made it much easier to use. The basic format for the Morse key was developed further and a style called a camelback became popular. This gained its name from the shape of the lever which had a hump in it. This hump added weight and was used to balance the lever, but later springs were added as well to bias the key in the off position. Morse telegraph operators often had their own Morse keys which they carried around with them from one office to the next. These keys normally had sounders on the same base to give an audible representation of any incoming message which they could then copy down. They produced a series of clicks, not the intermittent tone of the later radio signals. Despite the fact that most operators used sounders, inkers could be used to give a visual representation of the incoming message. Morse himself had envisaged this type of approach, although as operators quickly became used to deciphering the inker sounds, sounders were used instead for most instances. With the use of the Morse telegraph system increasing, new types of key were developed. James Bunnell in the USA produced his steel lever key, this had a hollow oval frame and it was light for carrying. The mechanical system made it easy to use and improved the electrical contacts. Outside the USA, other types of key were manufactured. This British post office key is much heavier and would have remained in the telegraph office and not transported. The Australian Clipsal key was not as heavy as the British one, but still not as transportable as the American keys. As radio technology, or as it was called then, wireless technology started to be used, Morse code was found to be an ideal medium for transmitting messages. Spark gap transmitters were used in the early days, and with the very high voltages around on them, special keys like this with insulators were sometimes used, even though it still must have been very dangerous to use them. The Morse system was also used by the various armed forces, and many different military keys were introduced. The WT-8 AMP key was widely used by the British forces from the 1930s and appeared in many different forms as it was manufactured by a large number of different companies to a basic specification. One of the more interesting military keys was used by the British RAF in their Second World War bombers like this Lancaster. Fearful of sparks causing explosions as a result of the fumes from the fuel, this key was totally enclosed, the two halves being held together by a clip which could even be held over the skirt of the actuator knob, holding the key down to provide a constant signal as a beacon if the bomber ditched. Returning to the late 1800s, one of the problems that operators experienced was called telegrapher's paralysis. This was a form of repetitive strain injury caused by sending Morse over long periods. One of the first solutions to this was called the sideswiper key. This made contact on either side and reduced the number of movements required to send a message. Later a mechanically automated key called a vibraplex or bug key was introduced. This produced a dash by pressing the key in one direction but gave a series of dots if pressed in the other. This made a considerable improvement for operators, reducing the amount of telegraphers paralysis and it also enabled the speed of sending to increase as well. As technology developed, fully automatic bug keys were made that produced both dots and dashes. These became popular once semiconductor technology made them viable. These electronic bugs or L-bugs became available as complete keyers on their own many of which had memories to store frequently used sequences. Later, the electronics was also included in many transmitters, 
and this meant that only the paddle was required externally. The Morse key has come a long way since its initial introduction. Although Morse is no longer needed for commercial communications, it is still enjoyed by many radio hams and some telegraphers groups as an effective form of communications, and it is still sent on all forms of key from the oldest keys right up to the latest keyers.